Okay, so I'm finally getting around to explaining the ant question, the notorious ant question, which is from Corpio 2, exercise 1G, so it's complex numbers. And I'm just going to read the question and we'll see how absolutely ridiculous this this is, because it says an ant walks forward one unit and then turns to the right by 2 pi over 9. It repeats this a further three times. I mean, why is, why is an ant doing this? It just doesn't make any sense. And then what makes even less sense about this is it then says to show that the distance of the ant from its initial position is sine 4 pi over 9 over sine of pi over 9. And it's this thing that makes this question so challenging because they're kind of forcing you to get a particular answer. And this might be equivalent to loads of other things. Well, they're kind of really pushing you down a particular route to do this. Now, you might be able to do this with trigonometry. You might do it um, in a different kind of way. There's so many different approaches you could take, but they're forcing you to get to this single answer that we've got here. And this is where I wanted to try and explain the way it's being done in Solution Bank, but really just to kind of explain to you that even if you can't do this by yourself, following some of these things here, you're going to pick up hopefully on some bits that might deepen your understanding or even just some little tips to do with complex numbers and trigonometry that might help you out here. So what we need to try and do is model a couple of things. We need to model the fact that it's going forward one unit and then it's turning to the right by 2 pi over 9 radians. Now, if we're going to just try and deal with that part of going forward one unit... There's a couple of ways that we could make something move forward by one unit. We could either plus one to the complex number. Obviously, we're talking about complex numbers here. If you added one to it, it's going to move one position to the right. If we added i to it, it's going to move one position upwards. Now, I think adding on one is probably going to be easier than adding on i. So I think if we want to have something moving forward one unit, if we want the ant to move, just plus one to the complex number and it's going to move to the right. The next thing that we're interested in about it is turning to the right or turning 2 pi over 9 radians. So we're now going to look at it turning 2 pi over 9 radians. Well, instead of the ant turning 2 pi over 9 radians, instead we could rotate the diagram. we could rotate the diagram instead. So instead of you sort of imagining that you're the ant and then the ant turning, the ant's just going to walk forward one and then the whole diagram is going to rotate and that is going to do the same idea of the ant turning. Now, the way that they do this in the textbook is that they actually want it to rotate um, minus 2 pi over 9 radians so that the whole diagram rotates this way, which actually has the ant turning to the left but it doesn't actually matter about the ant is turning to the left or turning to the right because its distance is still going to be the same kind of thing if it's consistently going left or consistently going right. So I'm just going to follow the way that it's done in Solution Bank just to kind of mirror some of the things that are being talked about here. So what I'm going to do to rotate something is I will rotate by multiplying by e to the power of minus 2 pi over 9i. So it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, but I'm just being consistent with the way that the approach has been done in the textbook. So it's going to rotate the whole diagram 2 pi over 9 radians in this way. Now, because the magnitude of this is 1, it's not going to change the size of anything. It's just going to do a bit of the rotation. Now, why have they got this diagram? This diagram that we've got here is to represent the Argand diagram. And the orange dotted lines are each representing slices that are 2 pi over 9 from this x-axis that we've got here. So we've got a 2 pi over 9 radians, 2 pi over 9 radians, etc, etc. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 of those, because obviously there's 360 degrees and each of these is 40 degrees or 2 pi and each one is 2 pi over 9. So I've just split that up in this way to try and help us visualise what is going on here. Now, the way that we're going to start thinking about this is we're going to begin with the ant at the origin. And the first thing that the ant is going to do is it is just going to move one space to the right. So I'm going to call that first place that we've got there. I'm just going to say after that one bit of movement. No, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to move it one space to the right and we're then going to rotate it. So you'll see what I'm doing here. This is where the ant has plus one. I'm now going to rotate the whole diagram so that instead of the ant turning, I'm actually going to say that the ant has ended up here. And I'm going to call this first little cross that I've got down there, I'm going to call that A. That location is A. So for A that we've got, it started at the origin, which is 0 plus 0i. I added on 1 to it to move it across that one place, and then I rotated that whole thing 
by e to the minus 2 pi over 9i. So a is just equal to e to the minus 2 pi over 9i. Now what I'm going to try and do is that same process, and I'll show you what happens. We're going to add 1 to it so that the ant has done that bit of walking across, but instead of the ant turning, we're going to rotate the whole diagram. So when that diagram rotates, this one which was at minus 2 pi over 9 is going to come down to minus 4 pi over 9 instead. And then this part that was horizontal is now going to be rotated so it's parallel to this part like this. And so that this location that we've got right here, I'm going to call B. That place B, we can now work out what it is. That place B will be the A coordinate, which is e to the minus 2 pi over 9i. We added 1 to that A coordinate to make it move along, and then we've rotated it e to the minus 2 pi over 9. Now I'm just going to quickly work on this and expand the brackets. So that's e to the minus 4 pi over 9i plus e to the minus 2 pi over 9i. That is the location of b that we've got there. Now I'm going to keep going. I'm going to say the ant is going to walk forward again. It's going to walk forward again one unit, and then we're going to rotate that whole thing. So I'm rotating the diagram, and it's still going to trace out that path that that ant is doing, because each time the ant is turning this angle and this angle here, is 2 pi over 9. Now you can see the ants actually turning to the left. It's just the way it's done in the textbook. I think this question is kind of like littered with lots and lots of mistakes, to be honest. Um, so we're going to rotate this. This means this one goes here. You don't need this diagram. I'm just trying to sort of help you visualize what's going on. This one is now going to be parallel to this, but it's going to be over here. So it'll be like that. And then the one that was horizontal is now going to be parallel to that one. So it's going to be like this kind of shape. And I don't know exactly where this is going to be, but that point there is going to be C. So I added 1 onto B, and then I rotated it. So I added 1 onto B. This is to try and find out coordinate C, which is e to the minus 4 pi over 9i plus e to the minus 2 pi over 9i. I'll add 1 onto it. I'm then going to rotate it to e to the minus 2 pi over 9i like this, which gives me e to the minus 6 pi over 9i plus e to the minus 4 pi over 9i plus e to the minus 2 pi over 9i. Now, I know I can simplify that. I'm just not going to bother simplifying it. I'm just going to leave it as it is just because it might make things a little bit easier. Now, I'm going to do the last step that we've got here, which is to add 1 on and to rotate it. Now, technically, I could just add one on and find that distance that we've got there. But the way that they do it is they add it on and get a slightly different kind of um, geometric series. It probably would work. I haven't tried it that way because I'm working on a number of different things at the moment. So I'm just kind of going with the way I know for sure works. So I'm going to rotate this whole diagram now. So it's going to look like that. Then we have the next part is going to be parallel to this. The next part is going to be parallel to this. And then that final part, which was horizontal, is going to be parallel to this. And so that location that we've got there is D. And then what we need to do, this thing that we've got here is going to be a complex number. I'm going to call that D or Z. All I then need to do is find out the magnitude of Z. Because if I can find out the magnitude of Z, that is where our little ant is going to sit. Here's my picture of an ant. Oh my god, this is a terrible drawing of an ant. But there's my ant as it has finished off. It walked along here, along here, along here, along here, and it's just kind of floating around. We want to find out what's the length of that line that we've got there. And then that's where the question just becomes about complex numbers and then some crazy, crazy trigonometry. So D, we were adding 1 onto the c coordinate which is e to the minus 6 over 9 pi plus e to the minus 4 pi over 9 i plus e to the minus 2 pi over 9 i we added one onto it and we rotated it and this is going to be what z is equal to so that's e to the minus 8 pi over 9 i plus e to the minus 6 pi over 9 i plus e to the minus 4 pi over 9i, plus e to the minus 2 pi over 9i. And that is what is equal to the complex number z. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to say that the distance from where it started, the distance from the start, is equal to the magnitude of z. 
But before I do that, I think I need to try and represent what this is as a complex, and not as a series, as a complex, as just a series that we've got here. So this is a geometric series. And we know our formula for the sum of a geometric series is a 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. So a in this case is e to the minus 8 pi over 9i. R is what it's getting multiplied by each time, which is e to the 2 pi over 9i, because it's increasing by 2 pi over 9. And n in this case is 4, as we've got four terms. So z can actually be written in a different way. It is e to the minus 8 pi over 9i, that's a, 1 minus r to the n. So this to the power of 4 will just make it 4 times bigger as the power. That's e to the 8 pi over 9i. And that's all going to get divided by 1 minus r. 1 minus e to the 2 pi over 9i that we've got like this. Now, we're actually going to try and use this fact that we're going to take the magnitude. This is why I think this question is confusing, because I think the temptation is just to actually like expand things and try and work on it. But you kind of get a bit further away from the idea of this sine 4 pi over 9 and sine pi over 9. So I'm just going to walk you through this. Like I said, I wouldn't expect you to kind of derive this yourself. I wouldn't be able to derive this by myself. I've had to look at the guide for this, but I want to explain like why it works so that hopefully we're picking up on some things. So we're going to now use this fact on here. I'm going to take the magnitude of z. Now, if I take the magnitude of z, what I really want to do is I'm not bothered about this thing because the magnitude of this is 1. So the magnitude of z is actually the magnitude of e to the minus 8 pi over 9i multiplied by the magnitude of 1 minus e to the 8 pi over 9i divided by the magnitude of 1 minus e to the 2 pi over 9i. But the thing is, I just said this, the magnitude of this thing is just equal to 1, so we can ignore that part that we've got there. So the magnitude of z is actually the magnitude of 1 minus e to the 8 pi over 9i divided by one, the magnitude of 1 minus e to the 2 pi over 9i. And so if I'm going to do this squared, we're going to just kind of think about it as everything being squared. And the reason I'm doing that is just to kind of avoid the square root parts that we've got there, okay? So I'm going to deal with this. I'm going to do my the numerator, 1 minus e to the 8 pi over 9i that we've got. And we're doing this squared. So if you imagine this as a complex number, we're going to first of all get it as, and get it out of this form that we've got, which is going to be my 1 minus, this is the cos of 8 pi over 9 plus i sine 8 pi over 9. And we're finding the magnitude of that squared. So the real number is going to be 1 minus cos of 8 pi over 9. And the imaginary part is i sine, don't need the brackets, i sine 8 pi over 9. And we want to find the magnitude of each of these bits. Now, when you find the magnitude of them, because it's a complex number, you do this part squared plus this part squared, square rooted, but because we're squaring it to get rid of that square root sign, we don't need the square root bit. So it's going to be 1 minus cos of 8 pi over 9, all squared, plus the imaginary part squared, which is sine squared 8 pi over 9. I'm going to expand these brackets on this first part. That is 1 minus 2 cos of 8 pi over 9, plus cos squared 8 pi over 9, plus I have the sine squared 8 pi over 9. And look, this is a cos squared plus sine squared, because that's just equal to a 1 that we've got here. That part is equal to 1. So I have a 1 plus 1, so I have a 2. I've now got a 2 minus 2 cos of 8 pi over 9. OK, we're going to keep going with this. I'm going to just leave it as 2 minus 2 cos 8 pi over 9 for a second. I'm going to deal with the denominator as quick as I possibly can. So that's 1 minus e to the 2 pi over 9i all squared. Well, you can pretty much see where it's going to go. It's going to be exactly the same process. But everywhere that it says 8 pi over 9 here, it's just going to say 2 pi over 9. So there's no point in repeating this whole thing. It's going to be exactly the same. It's just going to be 2 minus 2 cos of 2 pi over 9. So this now means that our magnitude of z squared is 2 minus 2 cos 8 pi over 9 over 2 minus 2 cos 2 pi over 9. Now this can simplify. 
So it's 1 minus the cos of 8 pi over 9 over 1 minus the cos of 2 pi over 9. We need to somehow get this into sine. Well, this is where we're going to do a throwback to some trig laws. Now, we know that cos of 2x, there's a few different ways of writing it, but one of them is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. That's our double angle formula that we've got there. So if I rearrange this, I get that 2 sine squared x is 1 minus cos 2x. Now be very careful here. I want you to notice that this is 2x and this is x. So it looks like we can rewrite the numerator and the denominator. I think that the numerator for this, 1 minus cos of 2x, 1 minus cos 2x, 1 minus cos 2x, I'm going to have to half that and I can write it as 2 sine squared, the half of that. So that's going to be 2 sine squared, the half of 8 pi over 9 is 4 pi over 9. And I can do the same on the denominator. I'm going to have to half it because that's my 2x and it goes to an x. That is going to be 2 sine squared pi over 9. So just keeping consistent with this, this is the magnitude of z being all squared. The magnitude of z being all squared is therefore cancelling those 2s, sine squared 4 pi over 9 over sine squared pi over 9. Then we can just square root both sides and say that the magnitude of z is sine 4 pi over 9 over sine pi over 9. <sighs> now, there's a few places where this can go wrong. In this part, you could have done this geometric series in like a different way around. We could have said that our first term was this, and each time our value of r was a minus 2 pi over 9. And it just makes it kind of like wind up in a different kind of way because you get these negative angles. There's loads of little tricks here. I don't see how people would get to this exact answer without having some guidance along the way. But hopefully, finally, people will stop commenting and be like, can you help me with the ant question? Can you help me with the ant question? Because I've finally done it and we've come up with this, this answer that we've got here. So pretty tough stuff. I like this idea of being able to visualize what's happened with this. Technically, I think they should have been rotating it the other direction. I'd love to hear if people explore it in a different kind of way. If you do do it and rotate it in the other direction, let me know. Can you get to the same answer? If you also do this geometric series where you take that as your first term and your value of R has a negative power, can you still get it down to this same answer that we have down here? I'd be really, really interested to hear from anybody who attempts this kind of question because it's some tough stuff and yeah, just kind of interested to see how it goes. So I hope that was helpful for you, even if it just kind of explains a little bit more about how um, complex numbers works.